ARK Invest Chief Futurist Brett Wintum is making some massive predictions about the future of AI, and my clue to you is it's not based here on Earth. Brett, not to take us down a rabbit hole, but you mentioned space compute. What is the feasibility of that in the short to medium term? Because it's not just Tesla and Elon talking about it. I think we've seen Google and they're going to send some TPUs into space. I think there was just a startup that actually did this. And then you also had some graphics come out from NVIDIA with huge solar arrays powering what looked to be like giant cargo container ships of what would be their Blackwell um, you know, data centers flying in space. So what is the feasibility of this? Because we're hearing it more and more. Yeah, I think there's um, misperceptions and then there's accurate perception of what's going on. The misperception is, um, hey, space is really cold. One of the problems with these chips is they get really hot. So therefore we can stick a chip in space and uh, it can get rid of its heat very easily because space is really cold. The problem is, yes, space is cold, but you don't have a lot of molecules in that up there to bounce your hot Mo vi rapidly vibrating molecules off of to like offload that heat. And so that temperature differential um, way to offload heat just doesn't work. It's just wrong. Uh, and so, but so, so actually the, the ISS, the, you know, space station has to have these radiators to, instead of having molecules bounce into each other to get rid of your heat, you need to actually output um, photons. Like you basically need to emit light uh, and, and radiate energy outward. Uh, and so the, if you look at the weight of the radiators on the ISS relative to the heat they have to dissipate, you would crudely compute, c conclude that sticking a computer in space is a dumb idea because the amount of weight and mass you would need to get rid of the energy is way, way, way too much um, for kind of like the output you get from the computers. Now you can run those radiators hotter, like you can actually change the, the ISS has, has kind of optimized to one um, specific set of engineering specs for an actual computer in space that's running training workloads. You can do things to actually make the economics potentially work. And that's why NVIDIA signed the partnership with StarCloud, which is a startup that's trying to do it. And um, I think Elon is looking at, you know, the amount of land space and, um, things he'll have to sign and execute upon in order to build kind of like lots and gigawatts and gigawatts of data center and saying, well, there's really like no power issues in terms of I can get 100% of the time solar energy in space and there's no real estate issue. I can just stick as much up there as possible. So once you get it working, then you can scale it effectively, you know, to the degree that you can launch things up, which he has the best in the world ability to do. And so then thinks, well, I need a lot of training compute. This is the, you know, uh, real estate that has no limitations on it. And so it's a way to kind of skip past scaling constraints I'd otherwise have. Now, near term, no way. Like this is a, you know, um, even, even on his timeline, it's kind of like 28, 29 when they begin doing this stuff, practically probably early 2030s. Um, and uh, there's a lot of engineering work, both on the SpaceX side and on the Tesla side that will have to go into trying to make this stuff work. And it's, you know, there's radiation shielding, there's the temperature stuff, there's the, um, I, I mean, the, there's just a lot. So I think the prior to this week's set of announcements, my belief was, yes, maybe you'll do computing in space for things that have to happen in space, but never back to Earth. Um, now, maybe it's more compelling just because it's so painful to try to build a data center on Earth that you're better off building a data center in space. But that's kind of a sad reflection on the political reality of building stuff on Earth. Tech companies like NVIDIA and SpaceX are seriously exploring putting AI data centers into orbit. But a big misconception about space computing is that the cold vacuum will naturally cool your processors. Here's one of the massive problems that makes the whole concept so challenging. When you fire up your laptop, it gets hot. The fan kicks in and blows air across the heatsink. The air then carries heat away from your computer and that's called convecting cooling and it's incredibly efficient. But in the vacuum of space, there are essentially zero air molecules to do that job. Instead, you're stuck with radiative cooling. That basically means your equipment has to glow to shed heat. So for example, think about how a toaster glows red when it gets hot. That's radiation. 
your space data center has to do the same thing, except it needs to stay way cooler than a toaster to keep the chips working. This is brutally inefficient compared to Earth-based cooling. So what does this mean in practice? Well, it means you'd need radiator panels covering an area larger than multiple football fields just to cool a single medium-sized data center. If you wanted to build radiators capable of cooling a 50 megawatt data center in space, you're looking at launching potentially thousands of tons of radiator panels alone, not counting the actual computers, solar panels, or structure. And those radiator panels don't just magically work, they need to run hot to radiate efficiently. So if you want to radiate more heat without building bigger radiators, you'd need to run your equipment even hotter. But AI chips already run at dangerously hot. Nvidia's Blackwell GPUs consume up to 1200 watts each and require liquid cooling on Earth. You can't just make them run even hotter in space, they'll literally melt. And the weight is an issue too. SpaceX's Starship aims to reduce launch costs to around $100 to $200 per kilogram, which sounds cheap until you calculate total costs. If your cooling system weighs 10,000 tons, which isn't unreasonable for a large AI training facility, that's $1 to $2 billion just in launching the radiators. Then add the computers, solar arrays, shielding, and structure, you're looking at costs that might make Earth-based data centers look like bargains. But despite these massive thermal challenges, tech giants are still pouring billions into this concept because the situation on Earth has become that desperate. The real reason companies are looking at space isn't about better cooling. Data center electricity consumption is projected to double by 2030. This is actually where I think it gets really interesting. And it's something Brett touched on, but I think deserves deeper analysis. The problem isn't just finding power, it's finding massive amounts of power in one location right now without waiting for permits. Let's put one gigawatt into perspective. That's comparable to some of the world's major nuclear plants, and it needs to be available 24 seven with zero interruptions. You can't train a massive AI model for six months and then have the power go out. You'd lose so much progress. On earth, building that kind of dedicated power generation takes a decade minimum when you factor in environmental studies, local opposition and grid upgrades. The permitting nightmare is absolutely crushing. This level of complexity is crushing AI companies, especially when you look at permitting. Grid connection requests are taking four to seven years in key regions like Virginia, and that's after you've secured the land, got zoning, got zoning approval, and convinced the local community that yes, they want a facility that uses more power than their entire town sitting in their backyard. Meanwhile, competitors like China aren't waiting at building now. But then there's another problem, which is water. A medium-sized data center can consume roughly a hundred million gallons of water per year for purposes. Try explaining that to a community facing drought conditions as to why they should give their water to AI training instead of farms or houses. So this is where space suddenly starts looking attractive despite all its problems. StarCloud projects the energy cost in space could be 10 times cheaper than land-based options because you get constant exposure to the sun in orbit. If you follow a no day night cycle, that means your solar panels produce continuous energy. No clouds blocking the sun, no seasonal variation, and critically, no neighbors to complain about noise, water use, or power consumption. The economics are interesting when you consider the full infrastructure costs on Earth. You need transmission lines, substations, and entirely new power plants built before you even start construction of your data center. That infrastructure takes years to approve and build and local communities fight every step because nobody wants high voltage transmission towers running through their town or in their backyard. In space, you skip most of this bureaucratic nightmare. There's also a huge strategic angle for someone like Elon. SpaceX has the launch capacity that nobody else can match. If you can make space computing work, you've created a competitive moat that's basically impossible for competitors to cross. They'd need to build their own rocket company first, which takes decades and massive capital investment. Meanwhile, you're already operating and scaling up. Your competitors are stuck on Earth, fighting for permits whilst you're expanding in orbit. <clears throat> this was one of Starlink's advantage. They had access to space before anyone else did. Brett mentioned the late 20s and early 30s, giving a timeline as to when this will be happening. And that doesn't mean the technology will be perfect by then, it's just that Earth-based constraints will be so severe that the space option, despite being incredibly difficult and expensive, becomes the path of least resistance for scaling AI training to the next level.
YouTube isn't just entertainment, it's one of the best client acquisition tools because it builds trust at scale. We've helped businesses grow from scratch to a $100,000 a month just by launching them a YouTube channel. Book a call with me below and let's see how YouTube could help your business scale.